So when I was newer to the sport, I felt pretty timid around the motor. I found my confidence lacking to the point where getting that motor on and warmed up was just an awkward and exhausting experience. But I am happy to report that over the years I have gained confidence in this department and today I want to share five tricks that will help you get your motor on and warmed up in a safer and easier manner. Make sure you watch to tip number five where I save one of the most important energy saving tips. Hit that like button for me, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this content and then without further ado let's jump into tip number one here. Some people think the most important part about flying paramotors is your mindset, others think it's the gear you're flying, some even think it's the safety aspect. In reality it's all about looking cool and if you find yourself feeling like this guy it's time to start putting your motor on the right way and look like you know what you're doing. All joking aside I'll start by facing away from my paramotor and take a knee with one foot by the hoop right next to the harness. I'll then get my arms in the shoulder straps and pull the rig forward onto my shoulders. From here you can simply push off the ground with your hands and stand up. Another method that I'm going to show you here is taking a knee with that motor off to your side. I'll feed one arm through a shoulder strap and with that same hand grab the hoop at the lateral spars. Stand up from here and get your other shoulder through as well and you're good to go. As a bonus tip here, once that motor is on your back and you're walking around other objects and people, it's a great idea to have your arms spread so that you know exactly how wide your load is. I can't tell you how many times as an instructor I've had a student whack me with their hoop. It's not too fun, thankfully I still have my face. My second tip for you is about checking your straps and your throttle as well as that kill switch. Before you start up, it's a really good idea to at least get your leg straps on. If for whatever reason that motor does start up with power, you don't want it torquing off your back and into your face. Be sure to double check those buckles as any dirt, or in my case, snow, can cause them to fall out. At this point, I'll get my throttle strapped to my hand nice and snugly. You wanna make sure that you can't shake that throttle off. And then I'll go ahead and squeeze that throttle fully and drop it a few times to make sure I hear a very important metallic click. This soft click is really important to check so that you are double sure that motor isn't going to start up and send you into the dirt or the ER. Which brings me to my third tip here on starting up safely and easily. Notice how we have already put the motor on our back before starting. I'm begging you as a person that has picked up fingers off the field before, please do not ground start your paramotor. Treat it like meth, guys, not even once. So we have that motor on our back, we're ready to crank her on, but I've noticed that a lot of people put so much effort into their pull start. This is where you can save a lot of energy, and here's my advice. It's less about the size of the boat and more about the motion of the ocean, if you know what I mean. If you're an Adam 80 pilot, you probably don't have any issue. Starting a sewing machine is pretty easy. Don't get me wrong, I love the Adam 80 when I don't need altitude. For the most of pilots out there, or motor sizes that are comparable, here is the technique to use. You'll notice that I start out by gently pulling past the first click I feel in the crank case. After checking the area to make sure you're not going to remove someone's arm, call clear prop, then clear return prop. your hand all the way back to the pulley before snapping it past that same point where you felt that first click. You'll notice that it doesn't require me to fully extend my arm. If it doesn't start up right away, just keep returning your hand all the way back as far as you can and then snapping it past that first point and she will crank on. My fourth tip on this list pertains to letting that motor warm up over time over the span of at least three minutes. As you may have noticed, the exhaust is the thing that is most prone to cracking and breaking. And this damage occurs due to thermal shock, which will expand and contract the metal suddenly. So I'll let my motor idle for at least one to two minutes, singing a little song, doing a little dance here, before I actually start bringing in the power. And it's really important to get your motor to full power for a couple of reasons. One, it allows you to get that motor heated all the way up before you're actually asking for it on your takeoff run. And it's allowing you to confirm that yes, your motor is achieving full power so that when you do need to get off the ground, that motor is gonna give you all the beans she's got. Before I share my last tip with you guys, if you found any of this information to be useful to you so far, I hope you'll consider supporting me over on Patreon. I offer early ad-free access to content like this, exclusive media like a PDF of my preferred pre-flight checklist, and a supportive lifted PPG community with the shared goal of seeing this sport evolve into safer and smarter pilots. Big shout out to my current patrons here. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. So tip number five here pertains to the posture that you're maintaining as you're warming up that motor. Some of these rigs have a lot of power, and if you're not bracing against it correctly, you're likely using a lot more effort to keep that motor from pushing you into the ground. So you'll notice that as I start bringing that power, 
I'll lean forward slightly, aiming that thrust at a positive five degree angle at the most. Keeping in mind that the more I lean forward, the more I have to use my back to brace against it. As I bring in more power, I will shift my hips back while keeping my legs relatively straight. You'll notice that I have one leg forward and one leg back. Just in case that motor were to quit, I wanna be able to catch myself. The key here is to use as much of your skeletal system as possible while you use your muscles to balance. I'm using very little effort here while remaining totally stable, giving my motor plenty of time to heat up. And there you have it. I hope these tips help you get into the air breathing a little lighter. So this was one small component of our pre-flight process. If you missed my last video, check it out right here where I go through all of the minute details of making sure that our gear is ready to fly. Let me know in the comments down below what tips you have adopted to make this process easier. And let's learn together. Thanks so much for watching guys. This is Lifted PPG. My name is Micah Stevens. Don't forget to take that deep breath and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.